All right, everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at AutoPan number three in our list of Ableton Live stock plugins A to Z. Uh, so today I've got a small demo track I did here. It sounds kind of like a retro uh, video game soundtrack or something. And while I was doing this track, I wanted to come up with some nice percussion. I found a nice loop here. So that sounds really cool, but I wanted to add a little more movement to it. So next I added a percussion loop and let's hear what that sounds like with no effects on it. All right, so this it's just this little kind of hi-hat type loop, uh, but by itself, Although I kind of like the way rhythmically that it interacts with the drum loop I already had, I don't really care for the sound itself. So I'd like to tweak it a little bit to, uh, I don't know, make it gel a little bit better with the loop I already have. And the, the plugin that I chose to do this with was AutoPan. Uh, and I, I just used a preset called Around the Head. And as you might guess, that means that the sound is being panned going in the stereo field left to right around your head, or that's the effect it's supposed to make. So let's listen to it off and then we'll turn it on. So that makes the whole drum loop seem kind of 3D. Uh, you get this cool 3D effect um, by adding that in. So let's go ahead and take a look at how AutoPan works and how to use it. Uh, as usual, I recommend opening your little uh, info view here so that you can mouse over the parameters and see what each thing does. But let's start with a blank slate. So uh, when you drag AutoPan in, it'll look like this. Um, and you're gonna wanna begin probably just right here with the amount. The amount is uh, how much effect this plugin has on the incoming signal, the sound you're applying it to. So let's just start the sound and I'll slowly ramp up the amount. So you can hear how it how it works. It's basically just an intensity. It's the amount of intensity of this effect. Next, we have the rate, and the rate controls the speed at which this uh, the the left to right motion uh, is traveling at. So let's turn this all the way up, and we'll play with the rate. We'll start really low, and we'll move all the way up. It's really slow right there. But we can also go quite fast. So that, that just controls the speed and you can do some cool chopping effects with that too. Uh, next over here we have the phase, the LFO phase, and as we can see it says adjust the amount of offset between the waveforms for the left and the right channel. At 180 degrees the LFOs will be perfectly out of phase, and that's what we've got it set at right now. So let's set the rate to around 1000, around, and uh, then we'll play with the phase as it's playing. So you can hear, depending on where we set the phase, um, we get some cool phase cancellation effects, which might be good for kind of uh, spicing up the rhythm of a loop that uh, you have. And next, uh, over here we have the shape. And this is the waveform shape. It's uh, turning the shape up, pushes the waveforms to their upper and lower limits, so kind of hardening their shape. For example, well, let's take a look down here. We've got our, our waveforms. We've got our sine wave, our down wave, triangle wave, and random wave. If we stick to sine and bring the phase back to 180, 
as we bring the shape up, it goes from this nice curve, curved thing to kind of squares or rectangles. If we do the down shape, bring it up, same thing. They go from the down waveform into those squares and anywhere in between. For the triangle, similar sort of deal. Get very blocky. And for random, it just pushes everything outward. All right, so let's hear how that sounds as well. We'll start with sign. So very hard back and forth, left to right. Let's try it down. So again, the end effect is almost the same. Next triangle. And random. So of course, random is, uh, I think, more useful in a sound design type application. All right, but let's go back to the sine wave. And also notice over here, under phase, we have a couple of familiar switches. These were also in our auto filter plugin. So uh, this is the LFO stereo mode. So these buttons switch the method of LFO offset between phase and spin. We've had it at phase, but if we change it to spin, we get a bit of a different visual representation up here. Uh, and again, spin detunes the two LFO speeds relative to each other, so we can create some really cool phasing effects. Uh, let's listen to what it sounds like. So that's really cool. I think that's probably my favorite feature uh, in this plugin is uh, using spin. You can, again, get some cool phase cancellations and phase effects to kind of shape and mold your sound into something very different than what it was uh, when you first started out. Now, we'll go back to the phase mode. And one more thing over here, under the rate, just like in auto filter, we can either uh, change it in hertz or we can also use sync mode and set the rate. So for example, right now I've got it at 16th notes. Can go as low, you know, all the way uh, down to 64th notes, which is, you know, really fast. And we can go as slow as eight bars at a time and everything in between. Let's set it at fourth notes, quarter notes. All right, and uh, you'll notice when we change from rate to sync, over here, this area changes from the phase to offset. And offset changes uh, the starting point of each LFO. So let's just listen and see how it changes as I move the offset up. So you can hear that too really changes the way that uh, the, the attack of the sound and the transient of the sound is handled. And it's all because of phase cancellation and such. Uh, but anyway, that's the basic thing. Oh, one more button to cover is the normal and invert switch. This just toggles the, the phase so you can invert the polarity. So let's say I bring it back to Hertz and bring it down a little slower, bring the shape down. You can see right now the left is this, this way. The right goes down first, but if we invert them, then the right ends up on top and the left on bottom. Uh, and you might need to do that in some applications, but most of the time I don't think it's that necessary. Uh, you just need to check your phase when you're mixing and everything. All right, so uh, again, I recommend that you play with the presets a lot. There are some good presets here. I especially like around the head or slow and steady, subtle stereo. 
Uh, I used this plugin, the uh, auto pan also, on this sound over here, which is uh, the main motive, but I pitched it up two octaves, and I, uh, I added the, the auto pan, and I used a preset called sharing. So let's hear how that sounds with nothing. It sounds pretty cool, but some of the artifacts from the, the pitching up that I did are pretty apparent. So let's try and turn this on and see how it changes it. So it adds a nice kind of vibrato effect uh, that I think makes it sound cooler uh, in the mix. All right, so anyway, that's uh, all I have to talk about for AutoPan. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And uh, also, if you have any suggestions for how to make these videos better, I'm, I'm taking feedback as I go through the plugin. So uh, hopefully today's editing was a little bit easier to see. Uh, but we'll be back next time, and we'll be talking about Beat Repeat, one of the coolest plugins in Ableton, and a very unique one. All right, see you next time.